Hey there folks, this is David on David's Brain. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon. Links in the description at the bottom. Alright, last time we managed to track down the shooter. Yep, and it turns out to be an old communist soldier from... Uh, who was part of the revolution for Revachol. And, uh, yeah, it turns out that the reason why he killed uh, the mercenary wasn't for, like, any political reasons or anything. Like, well, it's basically because he's just a perverted old bastard and he just wanted to see someone else suffer and he's just... Yeah, no, this guy is just a despicable, despicable bastard. And, yeah, I just killed someone... I, I mean, yeah, let's not mince words here. The mercenary, he deserved to die. You know, him and the rest of those guys uh, from... Uh, uh, or their mercenary company, they were just monsters, and yeah, good to see them be, uh, being put down, like do like the dogs that they are, but yeah, he started all this just because, uh, just because he was pissed off that everybody decided to you know, move past the war. Yeah, like uh, just like Harry, this guy is stuck in, uh, stuck in this absolutely toxic nostalgia. And he's just basically just waiting to die, so we'll make him answer for what he's done. Anyways, uh, what, uh, there have been others. Let's see. Was that why you left it? Let's see. Is that why you left the dry flowers behind her window? No. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night, and she was crying like a child in the corner of her room on the floor. Like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Something put the thought on you. A compulsion. What do you mean, put? A brief flash of terror. I just got this feeling for what you said. Do you agree? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? I haven't seen her there for days. She got away, uh, but she let us hear. She figured out someone was watching her from the sea fort. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week at the island. Like she knew. She'd look at night, crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Revachel, the oceanic wind washes 40-story towers. Above them, Lucerne Central Aerodrome, a cocoon suspended in the sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghost of the city she's leaving, for another, far south, smaller, distant, hidden, not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements, and water, and across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. There, on a dilapidated jetty, in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water, built by Philippe II, reappropriated by the commune, then lost in the landing. He's there, doing what exactly i don't know satellite officer vic Mayer points at the ruins behind that anti-aircraft something that's why we can't see him special consultant heidelstam is optimistic 
We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. Let's see. I've been looking at every I've been looking at everything everything else you haven't liked. A tragic comedy. Dragies, prostitutes, and rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. The familiar puck 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 of hatred. More specifically Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race themed radio shows. In the ruins, in their lorries. Pump full of steroids and radio revachal ninety two. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Everard. Yes, the fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Anything more? Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals. Like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. At all? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want, sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Right, yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, so what exactly are normal people to you? Just, you know, you're just a, you're just a bitter old asshole who just seems to ha uh, hate everything about everyone, just waiting for someone to put you out of your misery. Now I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco whores. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center. Leave it only a nonsensical sputter. If there was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people, might be worth investigating. Ask about that cock on parade too. Make sure you get everything here. Disco whores? Whores. Mm, there was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis. Syphilis is a disease Philip the Third contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. 
Abomination. The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues, too. Hundreds of them. Yeah, but it's still there, pal. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Let's see. Uh, because the king is holy and his statues are indestructible. Uh, ironically, let's see. Mm, because the king is holy and his statues are indestructible. No. Cynical design cockroaches like you erected a new, ironic version of it. We tore it down with honest working class plastic explosives. But there it is again, grinning. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed, and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. Wait, the bullet hole in Philippe's heart. The statue had been shot. That was him. Oh! It had to be. He's already proven capable of taking a far more complicated shot from here. It was you. You shot the statue. There was a bullet hole in his heart. So yeah, it was political. I did. A needless, sentimental gesture. I should have spared the bullet for a deformed monster of liberal capitalism. Shameful, really. Yes, shameful. So many others to punish over the years. Isn't that right, detective? That's it for the statue, then. Tell me, Mr. Dross. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is. Probably got a fat check for it, too. Shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. Hmm. He keeps having opinions about the union's leadership. You mentioned the union is social democratic, and Mr. Clare is a farce of a social democrat. Another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Placating the masses. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. Who's the disappointment? Everard Clare? That deformed toad. I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation. The smart one. His brother. Edgar. You mean Edgar, Everard's brother? <laughs> he talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin, where it's alienation this and hegemony that. You talk to Edgar? First against the wall with him. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Have you, have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone. I've hid. It was Edgar who came to me. You know, I don't think we ever ran into Edgar. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. Well, when was this? Twenty years ago. Neither of them could walk now. Could they? They were less fat then. What'd you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects like I were a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Mazov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Mazov. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. 
I still have the gas cooker he brought. Right. And did he let? Uh, did he let you be here? Let me be here. The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the Commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the Loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? Mr. Dross, did you kill the Crenel mercenary for the Clares? To incite a riot? You know why I killed that fucker, Dwat. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Mm. What have you done for Edgar before? Try teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. <laughs> okay, he didn't do the hanged man for them, but he's insinuating something. Let's see, by cock parading in his colorful uniform. All right, let's see, a logic check here. Well, since we're not going to be using these. Yeah, really not going to be using these. Alright, let's see. By the cock parading in his colorful uniform, you mean René? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack, across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. Now, I don't know about... I remember him. I remember him from La Nos. Not him, personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the Liberals came to their rescue. We missed one, that one. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston. Alone. There's no one there. Fat and plump. Like a pheasant. Just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Dross. Shoot me. You'd like to kill him? No. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day. The blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, no, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, René. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel... better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one for him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Hearing it may destabilize him. You sure you've gotten everything from him? Rene is dead. He died of old age a couple of days ago. No. Yep. I waited too long. 
I waited too long, and now he's dead? I'm sorry, Mr. Gross. I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. Fuck him. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black bays on these islands. His health ailing. You had a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. You cared about him? All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing his head explode. And now, God damn this world. I'm sorry. Fuck you. Are you okay, Mr. Dross? To go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love. To colonize the pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. All right, what was that deal between him and Edgar? The connection comes to you like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. 20 years ago, when you met Edgar, the Clares didn't run the Union yet, did they? <laughs> he acknowledges it. Here we go. A twist behind the dark bend. Who did? That bourgeois cow. Tiffin Holly was her name. Licked the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never seen a labor leader so hot on mutual cooperation. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. She was also a woman, wasn't she? Just like Clasher? She was. And she was real soft on those money men. Had a Barbara Muscova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. And then she just disappeared. Called in, they say. On the eve of battle. Ran away. Vanished like a piss stain. No, that's not quite it, is it? Did she? They say her daughter called in, not her personally. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No, I guess it was not. Edgar had someone make the call. Why is that, Mr. Dross? She couldn't make the call herself. Here it is, the bend in the river. Why? Because she was dead. How come? Because the cow caught a bullet in her right lung. Fell into the canal, grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled. Hard to say. It was a sloppy job, on a moving target. She was going home, waddling, dressed in yellow, drunk like she often was. The ruins are black around her, and she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal, heading home to Grand Coron or Betancourt, some place like that, where they build those new batements for the people who flourish in the hell around her, and the ruins. It was you. Huh. It was someone. Someone shot her. Or maybe she just fell. I get these violent ideations. My memory is filled with holes, especially the 30s. All I know is nothing changed. Not in the material base, not in the hegemony. There was no uprising, just words. The Union fizzled, sogged. Nothing came of it. Nothing. Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. Huh. If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar, you could walk. We would strike everything you've done and process you as a POW. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker state. Go shit. No, thank you. I'm Reva Sholian. My days are short. I will rot away here, in a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. But you did do it. I saw it happen, and I liked it. That's all I have to say. I didn't live and fight for 40 years to end up as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8, 
40 a.m. Radio Revachol, late night. Everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered, trampled. The same old freezing hatred. There is plenty here to work with once he's in custody. And the lieutenant knows it. He gives you a little nod to proceed. I'm glad we talked about this. Now... Glad we talked about what? Let's see. A composure check. I want I want to ask you again about the people you don't His like. Curls into All right, now we talked about what? All right, the composure check. Here we go. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain or the cough or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. He's surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated? By what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads, as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings, bubbling to the surface unconstrained by his nervous system. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile. Is this some kind of substance damage? Like he's addicted to something? Not only the painkillers he's clearly on. Mr. Dross, are you on some kind of a psychoactive substance? No. I won't be stuffed full of shit like the rest of this city. You said you take painkillers. I take them to cope with pain. The people of this city use painkillers because they have pain. Untreated illnesses, not enough money for a greedy doctor. Are you sure about him being lucid? Maybe he's just affected by an extreme case of socialism. It's not a downer. Rather, an upper, judging by his snaps. Are you on amphetamines? Like some kind of decadent rock star. Uh, Mr. Dross, are you okay? How's your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Could it be a symptom of overdosing on something? Something even you have not tried? Keep your eyes peeled. All right. Josef Levanovich Dross. You're under arrest for the murder of the Krenel Colonel here in Montenay. What? But you said I would be taken to the... Hmm? This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? What? Kim, he's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Pupils are dilated too. Eyes getting blacker and blacker. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Let's see. A perception check. Right, should be good enough. Here we go. There it is again. To your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it... What? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, 
very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Oh, shh, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this really us? Mm. Your skin crawls. What the hell did I just do? What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck is that? Is that a dragon? A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. The Insulindian Phasmid! Oh god, that was real! It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. What is that? What are you talking about? The giant stick insect! There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. How are you guys not seeing this? You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun head rise instinctively. There is! I see it! Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. Oh, thank God! But that means it's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence. Its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. Right. The Insulidian Phasmid. Let's see, the Triangon Force, uh, 446. The bolt action 446 caliber Triangon is the poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it is relatively precise due to a very manageable coil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple uh, consecutive shots fast. This particular piece is missing a scope though. Inspect the fast bed. Approach the insect first. Get close to it. Let's see, find the murder weapon. Yep. Let's see, what happened to the previous four woman? There were rumors that the previous four women of the Union just disappeared right before the Claires took over. Her daughter called in the election eve and said she wasn't running anymore or coming to work. What happened? Why did he do this thing? Why? You need at least three examples of proof to show you have them anyway. There's little point in this resistance. All right. We found the Insulindian Phasmid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well. Considering all the other creepiness that we've seen here, not surprising. All right, let's talk to this big guy here. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. 
Let's see. Plus three for Lena's childhood experience. Shaved after pheromones. Let's see. Let's see. Retreat slowly. We can't just leave it standing there. We have to do something, Detective. It could be... It could be connected somehow, even. You've never seen him get this excited. His voice is almost trembling. All right, let's roll. Approach very carefully. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise my hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Raise my other hand. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. That's right. Pray. Unwittingly, the insect continues its stridulations. As it moves, tuft-like structures still pretending to be plants rustle along on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. All right, yeah, well, all right. A very high inland empire jet spoke to the hanged man, didn't give up on the fastbed, those of crypto pathogenesis. All right, tell me. What are you doing? I exist. Oh, you could talk. I exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. If, uh, if I tell you, what will happen? Then I will tell you what he's like for me. For, uh, for me, it's fire. Burning. Fire? Where? Inside. Inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me, there is not even blood, but limp, like sap from a wine palm. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon? By what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an narrow funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, Perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never burn. I'm glad to be me. 
an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck. With eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great. Mute empathy for you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. The orthobots are in silent and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. But from you, banner-like. Blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. <laughs> in honor of your shit, Lieutenant Ifreiter, which you kept together in the face of total unrelenting terror, day after day, second by second. Detective <laughs> arriving on the scene. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that, oh, uh, let's, I was born to detect you. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I did it. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. No. This was just an accident. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in the thousand years. Is this a dream? What's happening? No, you're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This. Is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. Oh, uh, then all we do is beat our fists against it day after day with no way. Uh, then all we could do is beat our. We, uh, we need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by a god. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth or read. Yum yum. <laughs> Wait, so... So you look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you re accidentally eaten another reed, Fassman? Yes. I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. Oh, What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia. Endemic to the Insulindia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, combing myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective, dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea, the first in a thousand years. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution, district of Martinez, March 51. Are you the miracle? No. You are the miracle. How? The moral of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form. While you are extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile semen nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. 
There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its essence coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there. Behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? Or just forget? How have I always thought this way? No. You're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. I'll be extra careful not to, extra extra careful not to blink, stick and set. Don't worry. Or I've already forgotten the whole world once when I drank too much. So it is already happening. Soon one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. Uh, what does it look like? You're just staring at it. I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? No, I told you what it's about. Our fate. I think we should take the picture, and then you should back away from the unstudied species. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I met, you're the most, uh, you're the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For freedom. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. I will. She was hell on earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. I got it. Let's see. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker like a young pine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. It tastes like sugar. Very faint. The anthropod towers above you. Tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless. Mostly comprised of water. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. 
its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. Mercy. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. Here, within the smooth white inner part of its limb, you sense something very intimate. Thoughts. Lieutenant, it's thinking with its limbs. The nervous system could be spread out like that, over the extremities, like a cuttlefish. We got it. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. Ooh. It's gone. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. All right, let's see what we got here. A T932 rifle scope and a Fairweather T500 helmet. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. I don't think this helmet would... Oh, I'm sure I'll have a use for this armor in the future. Future use for a future armor. Agreed. Gear up, heavy porcelain man. It's a violent world. Fairweather T500 Virtuoso. Classy-ass passport. Let's see, passport's gone. Check about the deserter now. The T932 rifle scope. A common 30mm sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 446 caliber. It uses an older style, non dotted range finding art reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens, and it suffered water damage for its time in the Fastmates Drownery. Drownery. This is a well traveled passport, with visa stamped on it, <clears throat> and it's issued by the Republic of Orange. You found it in the Fastmates nest on the island. You can open it for more details. Fairweather T500 helmet. This monstrous looking, bug eyed ceramic helmet was in the Fastmates nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it, and it smells of seawater, but it's otherwise wearable and not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow. I have become complete! And it gave me plus one to suggestion, uh, plus one to half light, uh, minus one suggestion.
Oh yeah, now this looks cool. Okay, yeah, now this looks cool. Alright, anyways, Clatsy's passport. Let's see what we can get out of this here. Oh, Alright, well, no, we'll check it over next time. Alright, so yeah, that happened. Turns out the incident in Fastbit was 100% real the whole time. And we got a picture of it, so yeah, it should make the cryptozoologist happy at least. And I got myself the best armor. I mean, look at it. Ooh. The air smells sweet and scary somehow. Alright, so until next time, folks, this is David on David's Brain. See you when I see you. Bye-bye!